Hi, welcome to the Got Questions podcast. My name is Jeff. I am the managing editor at BibleRef.com. And today's episode is a special one because it is our 200th podcast. I have two special guests with me today. They are Shay Hoodman and Melissa Hoodman, and they are the co-founders of Got Questions. And I, presumably you've seen them before in other podcasts, but today we're going to take an opportunity to hear from them about some of what the history of this ministry has been like. Now, for those who, for some reason, might be coming to this for the first time, the Got Questions ministry family has been around since 2002. So this year we're celebrating 22 years, and we've managed to put together a tremendous number of resources. And at this point in 2023, we're talking 361 million page views, 7 million app sessions, 4 million gospel presentations, 500,000 YouTube subscribers, and so on and so forth. It's gone from something that had to start somewhere into a really major phenomenon. So, Shay, Melissa, thanks for being here today. Good to be here. Yeah, thank you, Jeff. So the first question I had for you guys was the just a little bit of a sense of pre-got questions. So what was what was life like? What was everybody doing before Got Questions Ministries was a thing? So it was probably late 2001 that I had graduated from Bible college and seminary, and I was serving in our local church. Um, Melissa and I were both serving at Stonecroft Ministries in Kansas City, and Melissa was the writer for their Bible study um, program, and I was the supervisor of the shipping department, so not exactly using my biblical and theological training much. And so we were really just praying, Lord, what would be— a ministry that would be a perfect fit. What was something that we could use, the, the training you've given us, the the passion you've given us, our love of technology, our love to write. So it was really like the ministries we were serving in, which we loved and still do, were driving us to something more. We're, the ways that we were serving in them was like, you know, it'd be even better if we could serve God in a more direct form, especially for me. So we late 2001, we began experimenting with putting a simple Bible question answer page on the internet. And at the very, very beginning, it was actually called Theology 101. And there was an old site called GeoCities where <laughs> you, would, you would build a website next to other people's websites, kind of picture like a city block. So I don't remember who we were next to, but the very first iteration of Got Questions was there. And it was in February of 2002 that we purchased the gotquestions.org domain name and launched the site shortly thereafter. So we kind of view... I think it's February 15th is actually the official anniversary of Got Questions Ministries. So that's when we bought the domain name and launched that site. That's when it it really started to take off and we begin to see it's like, wow, this is amazing to see what God's doing. M Melissa, anything different in your recollection of the events? Uh, that's so long ago, but do you remember how we picked the name? I do. Do you remember, Shay? We so, were sitting on a couch watching TV. And if for those of you who are really old like us, you'll remember that there was these Got Milk commercials. Jeff, do you remember those? Oh, I do. Yeah. And I'm like, hey, Shay, what do you think about Got Questions? And he's like, I like it. And we spent like $14 or something like that and bought a domain that day. And, <laughs> and so that's how Got Questions was birthed. And, you know, it's funny because I... I think a lot of people think that we like started Got Questions on purpose and God started a Got Questions on purpose. We didn't. We started Got Questions as a hobby, something to do for fun in the evenings after we got off, you know, our real ministry jobs. Mm -hmm. <laughs> so, uh, yeah, it's, it's a story of God taking something that was really small, an idea that two kids had, two teen, well, early 20s and um, building it into something uh, really big. And it's, it's been a fun ride. And that's part of what I think makes this interesting is you started this as sort of a hobby, sort of a side thing, but mm -hmm. how, how quickly, how busy did that, did that get? Did you just start with articles or answering questions? What was, how did the first, you know, little baby growth happen? Originally gotquestions.org was a one page website and the homepage had a, ask us your, any Bible question you have. And there was a forum there where someone could ask a question, one, literally one page. I guess there was a landing page if someone actually asked a question. So two pages total <laughs> on the website. And 
first few months, very little traffic was coming in, but then eventually the search engines that existed, notice I said plural, back then there were way yeah. more than just Google, um, started to recognize, got questions, and people, more people started visiting the site. So then we started getting 10 questions a day, then 20 questions a day, then 30 questions a day. So it's like, wow. So that opened up two new avenues in the ministry. One, we started realizing that we need help. As I remember, Melissa and I, we'd, we'd work all day long, come home. We had bought a laptop computer and a desktop, so I'd be on the desktop. She'd be on the laptop. The two of us were trying to answer all these questions ourselves. So we started building up a volunteer team of people we knew from Bible college and different pastors and friends we knew. Hey, here's what we're doing. Would you like to help? And then also building up, starting to add some FAQs to the website so that and we started seeing the same questions that coming in again and again and again, you know? It'd probably actually be better for people if they could find the answers instantly on the website rather than having to wait for us to be able to respond in a few days. So that was kind of the volume that increased traffic really drove us to make some changes that would eventually drive the ministry to even more and more growth. And, and Shay, I that, think two of our very first volunteers still serve <laughs> the ministry all these years later. Mm-hmm. Um, Kevin, who's on the podcast, right? He's He was one of our very first volunteers. Mm-hmm. And also my dad um, stepped in and helped us at the beginning, and he's still serving as well. So that's pretty fun to think about. Yes. Well, I, you can tell that there was a, a, a lot of rapid growth in that sense, mm-hmm. because if you were starting this in 2002, I first became acquainted with the ministry in early 2004, uh, which is when I started as a volunteer is like in April of 2004. So already by that point, within two years and a few months, it was significant enough that it had articles available and you were looking for more volunteers for the Q&A team. So it seems like it took off pretty quickly when you were in that phase. Maybe I'll ask Melissa from your perspective, what what was hard? What was easy? What seemed like it was impossible in those first couple of years of working with God Questions? Well, I think the first thing that happened um, that was challenging for us was just the sheer amount of questions we were getting. And Shay kind of briefly talked about that, but also is that we didn't have any money. <laughs> so uh, I remember the first time we needed to like buy a computer or buy something. We we're like, oh, I wonder if we could like, could this be self-sustaining? You know, is this something that um, we could do as like a job? And that was like so overwhelming to think of that, that God could use the Internet, one, to reach people for Jesus. That was totally unheard of back then. Right. And then, two, that um, we could use this as like a real ministry job. Um, and that God could use that in both of those ways to help people to serve him, but also to reach people um, with the gospel. Um, Another thing, way back then, we used to have a chat. Um, and we would um, sit down, we would have chat hours. And so it was like, you know, nine to 12 central time on Tuesday nights, we would chat with people. Well, that got to be really hard because all these teenage girls would come and complain about their boyfriends. And, <laughs> and so it became like this, this like call in radio show almost. It was horrible. It right. was so hard. So that's what I remember about that time that we just tried things to see if they would work. And then we were like, mm-hmm. okay, I can't do that. I am not cut out for that. <laughs> and so we would, um, you know, change the strategy a little bit. I don't, I don't mind the sound of that. Maybe we could cook <laughs> up something like a, like a deer Shay no, <laughs> sort of a thing, don't do like it. a Facebook don't do live it. and <laughs> no, just tackle it there. No. Okay. All right. No more suggestions like that. At some point in time, there was a recognition that this was not only going to take enough time, but that it could be self-sustaining. And there was a move to actually doing this as a ministry. How did that, when was this, what flipped the switch on that? Someone tried to give money, I think is what happened. Right, Shay? Yeah. So I, I could probably find the email, but I know I saved it somewhere. Um, this individual who I had submitted dozens upon dozens of questions um, wrote in and said, so I've had these questions for many, many, many years, and you are the only one who's ever like given me satisfactory answers to these questions. I'd like to make a donation. Are you tax deductible? I was like, hold on a second. You want to give us money to do this fun little hobby that we're doing? So now it's a Melissa I just, and I sat down and was like, okay, wait a minute. How, how does this work? I have no clue how to become tax deductible. Really had no idea at that point. So it's when we have to establish a board of directors, a, apply for the 501c3 paperwork with the IRS and 
do take all these important steps to get to the point where we were tax deductible. And then he, he made a donation. I have no idea how much it was. It seemed generous at the time, but um, yeah, that was kind of the first hint. And even then, like kind of as Melissa alluded to, our thought was never that we would draw a salary from it. It would be, well, at least the ministry could buy its own laptops and those sorts of things. So it was for the first couple of years, really, Melissa and I were funding got questions out of our own pockets, just to the minimal expenses we had. So yeah, the, I think the fact that once he donated and then once we put a donation page up online, I think it was only PayPal at that time, and more people started donating, we're like, Lord, is this... Is this you saying that this could be much bigger than what we originally thought? So that was kind of like the wake up call, so to speak. Yeah. And, and Jeff, I also um, saw what kind of joy it gave to Shay to have a job that like fulfilled him so well and all of his skills and abilities. You know, his, he, he's a great writer and, you know, and it's, it's really hard to make money as a writer. And even to like pay your bills and pay your rent, you know, so to see, to have something that he just brought him so much joy. Um, I was like, we have to figure out a way. Is is this really God saying, hey, this is what I want you to do? So. And there came a point in time where you decided that that was going to be, at least for Shay, that was going to be your actual right. job. Mm-hmm. So it, it, it went from being a hobby to a part-time secondary thing to a full time. Was that a quick transition or was that sort of a grad? Was that catch you by surprise? Like, wow, I definitely need to devote all of my time to this. It's one of those things where um, God grew it slowly, but surely over the amount of time from the time we launched, it was really almost two and a half years later that the ministry had enough funding to um, start paying me a, a very modest salary. Um, to make a long story short, um, we were still living in Kansas City, Missouri at the time when we launched Got Questions. And I was from Colorado, really wanted to find a way to move back. Um, God eventually opened the door and uh, another ministry here in Colorado Springs offered Melissa a position. And the CEO of that ministry was a big fan of Got Questions. And so offered to both give me um, free office space in their suite. So, and then a little extra funding for Got Questions so I could start doing it full time. Because when we actually stepped out in faith and mm. the Got Questions board approved me a salary, uh, we had enough money in the bank to pay two months. <laughs> of my salary. And that was not a huge salary. Trust me on that one. But, um, and in that history, you're 20 years later since we actually started paying an employee, um, Got Questions has never had trouble paying anyone's salary. So God has just been so faithful to confirm as we've grown slowly but surely over the years, strive to be good stewards, strive to set reasonable budgets and all of that. So it's amazing to watch how God provides. But yeah, it's stepping out in faith to leave a job with the, the larger ministry with steady income to something, oh, there's enough money in the bank to pay you for two months. Let's see how it goes. Mm-hmm. That's the Yeah. And, and Shay, a lot of people thought we were crazy. No, no one really understood the internet, right? That this could be an actual, something that was going to be sustainable for a long time. Is this just a fad, right? <laughs> so um, yeah, I think a lot of people thought we were crazy, but um, God told us to do it. So we did it. I can understand that. I had a, a Google blog for about <laughs> seven seconds. And that was hard enough for me to, to mess around with, you know, so I can imagine why people might've thought that, but I do see that there's this, there's this theme that's happened in what you're saying so far and what we've seen in the history where there's this steady, constant growth. Uh, you guys just keep plugging at it, keep working at it and things just continue to go. Now, at some point in time, you get from one website, which is gotquestions.org, And now got questions has, Compelling Truth and Seek Find and GQ Kids and 412 Teens and Bible Ref and a podcast and YouTube. What was the 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 process that you started to get to? You know, what what made you feel like, yes, we can or we should start to expand what we're doing? So the very first website in addition to gotquestions.org that we launched was actually seekfind.org, which yeah. we found we'd go to Google or another search engine and search for a certain Christian topic to help us to write an article. And we'd find good sites mixed with bad sites. It's like, why don't we just create a little internal Christian search engine that only indexes um, trustworthy Christian sites. And then we played around that eventually got something that worked pretty well. And then we said, you know, this might actually be a good tool 
for people at large. And so then we made it actually public so people could start doing it. Then the second site after that that we launched was actually a site, our site for kids, um, gqkids.org, where we tried to take the um, answers that we have on gotquestions.org, but communicate them in a more um, kid-friendly format. So those were the two um, first sites we launched after Got Questions. And as you said, shortly thereafter, we launched a site for teens, 412teens.org, um, compellingtruths.org, which is a, um, a site with a little more of an apologetics and worldview focus than the others. And then eventually we had a, a blog site for a while that eventually we kind of realized, that, I don't know that the vision for this site actually fits our strategy. So it's actually still in existence at, at blogos.org, but it's um, we're not actively building up that site anymore. But then later we launched um, bibleref.com, which Jeff, which you are obviously thoroughly familiar with, which is a verse by verse Bible commentary um, where anytime someone goes to Google and searches for what does John 3.16 mean? What does Philippians 4.13 mean? We want to have an article on every single verse in the Bible that it explains that verse, but then also explains it in its surrounding context as well. And then it's just grown over the years to, yeah, okay, if people are finding us through Google, through searching, um, how are people finding us on YouTube? So launch a YouTube channel where we create video-based versions of our articles. Or obviously, um, in our history is when the iPhone came out and suddenly apps became hugely popular. So we launched apps for iPhone and Android. So it's not like an official slogan or anything, but it's kind of like wherever people are searching for truth, for biblically based answers to spiritual questions, we want to be there with content. So that is what drives multiple websites, multiple avenues of getting our content out there. And just, um, we want to be used of God. We want to be there where people are searching because just like every other mission field, the internet is a spiritual battlefield. Um, we're dealing with, um, cults, we're dealing with um, Christian ministries or churches that don't teach the truth of God's word, or at least don't teach it very well. Um, so we, we just want to be there with the truth, uh, present it in love, answer questions um, biblically. So that's always been our focus and passion. So wherever the internet goes, we will strive to be there with solid biblically based answers. Yeah. And Shay, I think um, if you look back on our history, I think it's a of God asking the people and the staff that got questions to do the next thing. You know, what? how can you be faithful in the next step? What's the next step? What's the next step? It's not like, oh, we knew we were starting this huge ministry. No, it was be faithful in whatever's next. And um, I think that kind of explains a little bit about that history. You know, it wasn't like, hey, start 250 languages tomorrow. No, how about you start Spanish? You know, it's just it's just a, a, his, a story of God asking us to do the next thing faithfully. What I see when I'm talking to people sometimes about the ministry is a lot of people see what they see. They interact with it. But uh, it's it's one of those situations where people typically they only grasp what they interact with. So, you know, people think of the website, they think of the answers and stuff, but sometimes they don't realize everything that's behind this. So to make sure that people understand who are watching and listening, this thing that Shay and Melissa started is, is not still currently being operated by two people. Um, this has grown and required resources to the point that there is a staff of people to do different things in the background. There's a small army of volunteers working with the Q&A. So one of the things I can say from my perspective of seeing that is that you've not only develop something that's provided answers, uh, places for people to seek truth, but they are ministry opportunities for other people who are looking for that. Um, that's something I don't know that people always understand that it's, it's not just type something and press send. <laughs> there is, there's web development and there's servers and there's translations and all these things that go on behind that. And obviously that stuff does not, uh, pay for itself. Mm -hmm. Um, has there ever been a time where there was a real concern that something wasn't going to work or that got questions was just not going to have the funding? Each time we hire a new employee, um, <laughs> especially in the early years, was, I mean, for, for a few years, it was just me. I mean, once mm -hmm. the, the board approved bringing me and on And a lot as of employee, volunteers, right? <laughs> yeah, it was me. No, that's not, yeah, yeah. me is the only employee and a yeah. ton of volunteers. 
Um, the first time we hired someone else, I was like, okay, not only is like my livelihood dependent on this ministry, now I'm asking someone else to step out in faith. And doing that is another stepping out in faith in and of itself. And so hiring our um, third employee, our fourth employee, our fifth employee, and now we're up to 12 employees. And praise God. I'm so grateful for the Got Questions team. But even beyond that, um, a dozen or two contractors who serve the Lord in different ways, whether it's video production or translations or writing or editing or programming or development or so many different things going on. Um, and then an arm, like you said, a small army of about 200 volunteers who answer questions, who write articles and so forth. There are um, hundreds of people who are involved in Got Questions Ministries on a regular basis, let alone not even talking about the approximately 16 million people who visit um, just got questions.org, our, our main website every month. It's it's tremendous. Um, it's the, the verse in, I, th- I believe it's First Peter, where God is doing immeasurably more than anything we can ask or imagine. And that's truly, truly the case with Got Questions Ministries. I have seen uh, a lot of people ask questions about that aspect sometimes of the ministry, especially when that conversation comes up. And something that I think is unique um, and you guys can correct me maybe if the phrasing of this isn't accurate, but the, the way that Got Questions was funded originally is effectively exactly the same way that it's funded today. This is not a ministry that does sales. This is not a ministry that does uh, a huge amount of advertising revenue. It's pretty much all people who have come to the material and said, this has really helped me and I want to be able to keep going with that. Is that a fair assessment? Yeah, I think you're exactly right, Jeff. Uh, the majority of our funding comes from people who have been helped from the website. You know, um, people will often say, you know, I had this list of 150 questions and I took them one at a time and went straight down the list. And you guys were faithful to answer every single one. And um, here's $50 or here's $30 a month or, uh, or a church that would say, hey, I really, really appreciate what Got Questions does for not only for our congregation, but for uh, in, as an outreach, as a mission. Uh, biggest mission field in the world, right, is the Internet. Um, and so um, we want to support that. And we're very grateful for all the donors. Um, we couldn't do it without you. So thank you. Yeah. Uh, approximately at this point, it's about 90% of our income comes from donations. Wow. And there are a few um, foundations that support God Questions, a few churches and ministries. But of the 90%, I'd say 90% of that is this individual donors who, Jeff, exactly as you and most have said, just um, have been blessed spiritually benefited by the ministry and want to give a donation um, as a thank you. And truly, yeah, you're right. We don't charge for anything. There's absolutely nothing on the website that costs any money. And a lot of people really appreciate that because you know all, all, everything we do t- to some extent costs money, but we don't charge anything. And it's my absolute goal and passion to never charge for anything, um, just to give everything away, give the content away, make it available to as many people as possible and just trust that God will provide. And he's been so, so faithful to do that in our history so far. One of the the joys sometimes of serving in ministry is there's hard times, there's difficult things that you have to do. There's moments you have to get through. But one of the things you also do get in return for doing that is you get that sense that you're doing what God wants you to do. And there's a blessing behind that. What, What do you... We start with Melissa. What do you find most enjoyable right now about the work you're doing with Guy Questions? What is the thing that most sort of fills up your spiritual cup? Yeah, so right now, um, my main responsibility, I have two responsibilities. One is I manage the kids site, gqkids.org. And for that responsibility, when a child comes on and asks a question, often with the help of their parents, I'm assuming, but um, and then gets the gospel for the very, very first time, man, that makes everything, every single thing worth it. Um, That is just such a blessing to be able to lead anyone. But Um, in my case, mostly children, um, to the gospel and say, here's what Jesus did for you. You know, do you believe this? And that's just a blessing. Um, And then to hear them say, wow, I get it, right? I love that. Yeah. Um, And then um, I also do social media, forgot questions, and that's a little harder, but there's a lot of people on social media who share our content, share our verses that we present each day, and um, are truly thankful that we're giving them a tool that they can reach their friends 
um, with the gospel, mm-hmm. because that's why we're here, right? We're here to help people understand God's love for them and what he did for them on the cross. So um, if we have a tool that can help someone do that with their friends and family, I'm that just brings me joy. Shay, how about you? What's the thing that, and, and this is a sort of an interesting question from Shay's perspective, because he's the man with all the hats. Um, he's the dude in the middle of the web holding a little thread <laughs> with everything attached to it. So you have quite a few things to pick from, but what's the thing right now that you feel like is the most fulfilling part of what you're doing with the ministry? Oh boy. Um, just let me answer the other side of that. Uh, as the ministry's grown, the administrative aspect of it has grown as well. And I, I just being full ass, I don't particularly enjoy that part of it. I know it's necessary and I know it's necessary for the um, leader of the organization to handle that sort of stuff. So I'm happy to do it, but um just recently, I've been refocusing myself on actually like writing articles again. Um, and I, I've been writing articles all along, but the last few years, it's been significantly less than it was in the past. And, um, and just being able to, oh, this is a cool question. I think there should be an article on the site. I, I'm going to write an article on that. And as a CEO, I kind of have the prerogative. I, I can choose which ones I want to write and which ones I want right. to make other people write. Make Jeff so, write the ones you don't want to write. <laughs> yeah, yeah, something about camels, Jeff. Isn't that right? Um, what else? So, what else is new? Yeah. So, um, just the truly the exact the one thing I enjoy the most about serving at Guy Questions. The same thing that I enjoyed the most when we first launched is it's getting to answer people's Bible questions. I mean, truly, if someone has a question. That's a great question. I want to answer that, and then be answer it for someone personally, but then also then answer it and publish it on the website and know that it'll eventually be read by um, thousands of people. That's just so rewarding and encouraging. And um, then hearing back saying, wow, I never imagined that Got Questions would already have this article, this question answered. So thank you for that. Hearing the the testimonies of people who've been impacted. So yeah, it's it's always for me been the same thing is I want to help people find answers to their questions about the Bible. So anytime I get to do that, that's, that's what um, keeps me going, keeps me charged, keeps me excited about um, what the ministry and then watching the Lord take our feeble efforts and then using it in explosive ways. It's, it's amazing. I appreciate that you guys are taking the time to talk about this. The, the, the last two questions I have for you guys are relatively brief or I'm going to try to keep them brief. And one of them would be, can you give me a short description of something about working in a ministry like this that most people just would not realize? You know, a sentence or a statement that you could say, people don't get that or people don't realize this. What's well, something that to you, you find that when you talk to people about doing an internet ministry, especially one that's as wide and far reaching as this, that people do not expect or they don't understand until somebody tells them. Yeah, I'll start, Shay. I'll give you, I'll give you a time to think. Um, since I work for the kids website, gqkids.org, um, people are often surprised to hear that the questions we get from kids are harder than the questions we get from adults. Okay. Um, kids think very tangibly, very um, concretely. And mm-hmm. so often it's it's very hard to answer their questions. And so um, that I think that would be uh, the, the first thing that came to my mind is that, you know, it's so important to answer kids' questions. So important, but it's also kind of hard too. So um, it, it's a joy to do that, but it's sometimes very challenging. Yeah. Um, for me, I, a good sentence would be, um, no matter how big a ministry gets, um, actually hearing from people mm-hmm. is tremendously encouraging and, and needed. Um of people who've like, oh, I've been using your website for 20 years and I never even thought of like sending you a thank you. It's like, well, yes, we, we've been thanked, I don't know, in our history probably a million times, but that doesn't mean we don't want to keep hearing it. Um, yeah, it's, it's very the, encouraging. It's very encouraging to hear from people. There, there are people behind these websites and who are receiving the emails and um, we do receive some discouraging, discouraging <laughs> ones on occasion. So having that balanced out with people who've actually have their lives impacted in positive ways is tremendously encouraging. We see the reports. I can see a report that says 16 million visit people visited the website last month, but to even hear from a handful of people um, in specific ways that we got questions has impacted them is 
tremendously encouraging to us, kind of powers us up to, um, we're at it for another day. Yeah. Awesome. Awesome. Well, I know another way that people can support is with prayer. So, uh, what would be the top prayer request or two that you guys would say people could be praying for, for got questions right now? Um, I would request for, prayer for our uh, Got Questions staff and for our volunteers that they would not grow weary in doing good, that we would stay encouraged and uplifted and mentally strong, spiritually strong, so that we can um, continue the good work that we're doing. Uh, amen. Absolutely, Melissa. And to add to that, I'd say it's prayers for um, wisdom and discernment, mm -hmm. just to know God's direction. There are so many things we could be doing. Um, we, we want to go where God is moving. We want to follow his lead yeah. in regards to what um, specific avenues of ministry that got Christians pursues. Um, we just want his leading. Um, and that's a lot of great ideas are presented to us. A lot of great ideas come from our staff. We don't pursue all of them because we really want to stay focused on what ideas are most in harmony with the mission, vision, purpose, and values of the ministry that God has convinced us of. So this, that discernment, um, we truly covet those prayers in addition to the prayers for protection and encouragement that Melissa mentioned. Excellent. And, and Jeff, Hopefully people that, who are listening are going to pick up on those. Yeah. And just that God would continue to use the site to reach people for Jesus. You know, it's, it's blown. I remember the first time uh, Shay was in the office in our one bedroom apartment in Kansas city. And he's like, Melissa, do you think someone can get saved on the internet? And I was like, <laughs> I don't know. I, I think so. And just to think that over the last 22 years, God has led so many people to salvation <laughs> through a little idea that Shay and I had so long ago, um, just blows my mind. And I, I pray, I pray daily that God would continue to use it, um, that the kingdom of heaven would be enlarged um, from the efforts of our team and from the Holy Spirit working in, the, in their lives. So, yeah, that would be another prayer I would add. That's excellent. Well, speaking as somebody who's gotten to interact with the ministry on almost every conceivable level, <laughs> um, I can say that there's a lot of appreciation for what you guys have started and the way you've continued to lead it with the integrity that you have. Uh, I appreciate it. I know the other staff volunteers appreciate it. Volunteers and the people who use the site appreciate it as well. Uh, so today, this has been the Got Questions podcast, our 200th wow. podcast episode. Today, we've been talking with Shay and Melissa Hoodman, the co-founders of Got Questions Ministries, and talking a little bit about this journey that's been going on for 22 years now watching this grow from something in a little back room of an apartment to something that's impacting the world millions and millions of times over. So we appreciate prayers and hope that this has been helpful, maybe enlightening, give you a little bit of a different perspective on what exactly it means to have a ministry like this. So that's who we are. Got questions? The Bible has answers. We'll help you find them. <laughs>